this is where we get the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which actually ends up being important. So one of the things and the reason why I think we started Graceful Gatherings was to understand the shadow so that we can better see the reality. So the Old Testament is a shadow of what's to come. And what's to come was Jesus Christ. So that's why it's so significant when Jesus says, I didn't come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. These are things that were a shadow of what was supposed to come. And it signifies something greater that is coming, even the law. And we'll, we'll get into that probably next week or weeks after. But we get the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And in verse 3, it says, Then Moses said to the people, Commemorate this day, the day you came out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery, because the Lord brought you out of it with a mighty hand, eat nothing containing yeast, right? And then verses seven through nine, it says, eat unleavened bread during those seven days. Nothing with yeast in it uh, is to be seen among you, nor shall any yeast be seen anywhere within your borders. On that day, tell your son, I do this because of what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt. This observance will be for you like a sign on your hand and a reminder on your forehead that this law of the Lord is to be on your lips. For the Lord brought you out of Egypt with his mighty hand. Now, there's a couple of things that this um, synonifies. So one, it's supposed to be a memorial. You're supposed to do this year after year as a memorial for the thing that God has done for you. OK. And then. It's also a symbolism of sin. And that's one of the things that you're going to see throughout the Old Testament is how yeast is synonified with sin. So it's a reason as to why God tells them don't eat anything with yeast. It is walk in your deliverance, your deliverance from sin. Death passed over. You were delivered from the punishment of death. Now you walk in that for these seven days where you're eating nothing containing yeast, yeast is um, symbolically seen as sin. So this um, this feast of unleavened bread, it symbolizes the purity and holiness because yeast, because it rises the whole bunch, even just a little bit of yeast, what we see in the New Testament, rises the whole bunch. Um, so they take out all the yeast, which is to avoid all sin. Do not have any sin among you. Now this obviously shed so much more light in the last supper. So what we read in Luke chapter 22 verses 19 through 20, it says, and when he had taken some bread and given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body, which was given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup after they had eaten it saying this cup, which is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. So what Jesus is doing here, like I, I want you to remember the reason why the Feast of Unleavened Bread is given after Exodus is because God wants them to remember him and what he's done. And now in Luke, Matthew, Mark, when we get the, the Last Supper, Jesus is saying, do this in remembrance of who? Also, he is synonifying himself with the unleavened bread, because this is going on right before Passover, which means that the feast of unleavened bread is going on. Jesus is crucified right before Passover. Some say on Passover. So the feast of unleavened bread is going on. So he's picking up this unleavened bread and saying that this is my body. This bread has no yeast, which means that it has no sin. So he's saying, this is my body. I am sinless. And then he himself broke it, which shows the self-sacrifice that is about to go forth for Israel and the rest of the world. Um, so this is, you know, obviously very, very huge. And also even him saying, do this in remembrance of me. When this was a feast that was dedicated unto God, it could very easily also be seen as a div divine claim. Does uh, anybody have any questions about this? All right. So that's the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is a shadow of the new thing to come, which is communion, right? And we do this as often as we can in remembrance of Jesus Christ. So we walk in the newness of what he gave us in the new covenant that is poured out for us in his blood.